Hello there, welcome back to the Agostino Zinga Show with me, your host, Agostino Zinga. This is episode number 268. Dos, something along those lines. Hope you guys are doing well, hope you guys are doing fine. Are you okay? Are you good? Great, amazing, amazing, great. I've just got back from a really early workout this morning. I went super early, it's no, not normally go this early, but... I tried to get in as early as I can because it's Monday and I want to set a good little precedent for myself. I'm back home now, had breakfast, going to record this podcast and then zip off back to work. So if you're watching this via the YouTube video and you like what you're hearing, smash that like button, click subscribe. If you're listening via the podcast app, leave me a five-star review so people can find the show. Anyway, we're back, man. It's been a long weekend and um, yeah, it's been a tough weekend, actually. A tough end of Sunday to beginning of Monday, as I'm sure most of you are aware if you've been keeping abreast of what's happening on social media and you're a fan of hip-hop, you would have known that um, Juice World unfortunately passed away last night, man. Juice World, uh, a very influential rapper in the kind of emo rap SoundCloud era, has passed away. One of the maybe leading artists in that genre, somebody who had a lot of potential ahead of him, somebody who was collaborating with everyone under the sun and really making some hit records and really showing his range. Somebody who recently had uh, did a one of my favorite collaboration projects, uh, the tape we did with um, with Future was really good, and um, I just enjoyed his music overall. I thought he was one of the most talented ones of, of his group. I thought, like I said before, he had a lot of potential, he had a lot of range. I thought his live shows could have been really pushed to the further outer limits because he had a pretty decent singing voice for somebody that predominantly was concentrating on rapping. Um, his influences were quite wide and varying. And just generally came across as a bit of a good egg. Came across like he had a lot of, um, he had a lot of give, lot to give in terms of artistry. But unfortunately, uh, he died. Um, now the com- what well, the cause of it has been said seizures, but we don't know what the. There's no toxicology report yet, so we don't know exactly what happened. And I guess at now this moment in time, it's probably not. Those, it's not super important. I think, I think it's just cool to remember him, in his legacy. But yeah, man, I'm bummed, man. I can't lie, I'm super bummed out. Predominantly because um, I think is it is it Juice World is it Juice Juice World against the world the one with um him and Future. Because I listen to it all the time, man. You know, it's just one mixtape I listen to every time I run. I sort of just have it on shuffle when I'm running outside and stuff. And uh, Future and and Juice World against what World on Drugs in it? Yeah, of course. You know, now it's a bit. It's a bit uh, prophetic, everything that's been said on that album. And, it, you know, I think if you're a fan of Juice World and you really pay attention to his lyrics, especially the mixtape that came out last year, Goodbye and Good Riddance, you know that a lot of maybe the first, maybe I'd say 10 tracks on this mixtape are essentially, you know, him basically crying out for help. That album there has got on the screen, Good Luck and Good Riddance, is probably, um, yeah, man, I don't know what to say. I've got nothing really insightful to say. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Juice World. Um, I've followed his whole career basically from the onset since he kind of came onto my radar watched essentially all his interviews big fan of his freestyles and yeah i've just bummed out man i really am bummed out i can't really have any i don't really have any constructive to say nothing insightful i'm just sad that an artist that i really looked up to and somebody that i was in you know looking forward to seeing how he evolved has passed away and if you look at it you know if you inspect a bit closer you'd say you know the mount rushmore of emo rappers you know the free probably the three rappers who are probably pushing it the furthest and really showing their musical range and really kind of setting the trends um, sonically, stylistically, were Lil Peep, XXX and Tastion. And now um, Juice World have all passed away at ridiculously young ages. Um, I just wish it could have been avoided, you know? I don't think now is also the time to come out with all those anti-drug you know, PSAs and stuff because we know people are going to do what they have to do in life. And I think if you follow Juice World, you know that a lot of his um, quote unquote drug issues weren't necessarily due to the fame. He came into music having those um, issues, you know, plaguing his life beforehand. It wasn't like some of these kids now who kind of get famous, get some money, and then start exploring drugs. Um, he was doing this beforehand, so maybe the access to them maybe increased, but he was do- he was going through stuff in it himself personally. And I think. We saw that a bit of his... I don't even want to speculate on this stuff. It's not the time. Um, but yeah, you if, if you're a fan, you know what, what was going on in his life. 
and you know what he had to deal with and you know what he was trying to battle through and yeah man i just miss the guy man i miss him already um i find it really difficult though because this is the thing I, I followed i was a big fan of x i was a big fan of i'm still a big fan of x still a big fan of little peep and i've you know listened to the entire catalog back and back and back to front front to back but i find it really difficult to listen to these guys once they pass away man I just can't bear to hear their voice. And I just can't imagine what it must feel like if you're their fam- if you're a close friend or family member, what it must feel like to hear their music played out. It's obviously cool tribute and I think it's great to see people streaming so loads of Juice World stuff and you know getting his streaming numbers up and hopefully helping his family and all his loved ones to make sure they don't have to work again. But I just can't bear listening to them again, you know? I think of the Barbell Buddha from um the crossfit world who was a, a podcaster that i followed for a long time who unfortunately passed away i think in 2016 from a uh, heart complications and stuff and i haven't listened to his podcast ever again but he was somebody i looked up to somebody i kind of framed my solo podcast around the stuff that he was doing and he had a really good philosophy on life he was going and he was, he was doing some interesting things before he passed away it's always like that anyway it always seems as if the person that passed away is, i guess maybe it happens in your know, later years maybe you know you get to a point in life where you've achieved a lot and people have enjoyed your artistry and they've kind of been able to enjoy your full range and then when you do end up passing it's all like you know okay cool he he lived a good life he or she lived a good life but some of these artists like it always seems to be their life gets cut short just as they're about to like you know really go for the jugular and you just felt as if juice world was gonna you know start 2020 off with a bang you know but unfortunately we won't be able to see that but i don't know he seemed like somebody who was you know recording a lot and putting a lot of effort into making sure he turned over loads of music so i won't be surprised if we get a full project sometime very soon because he just had so much stuff in the cat in his kind of archive he was you know a prodigious recorder somebody akin to like a future or like a young folk who just records and records and records so i think we're gonna probably see that sometime soon but yeah man, i'm just bummed out in it i'm just bummed out i've got nothing intelligent to say at all um, the story appeared on TMZ the other day. <clears throat> so yesterday, let me quickly read that, and then we can kind of move on. But Juice World dead at twenty one. Final moments captured. Um, it says the following: uh, footage appears of what you should it should be Juice World's final moments in the air and finally on the ground, starting to surface. And the rappers seem to be in good spirits. I'm not going to click that video. Um, another video here showing him in a, in a private plane with his friends. Everything seemed to be going off. Okay. A second video appears to show a crew landing at Chicago's Midway Airport, which would mark um, Juice World's actual last moments on this earth. Um, in the clip, you see him hanging out <coughs> with one of the buds at the back, apparently fully conscious and alert as they look at something together, possibly a phone. Soon afterward, it would suffer a seizure and later die at the hospital. One of Juice World's songs, Too Soon EP, was called Legends, and it's a project, pr- pretty prophetic lyric, as he said. The track was about little people and existential as death. In this song, he raps, what's the 27 club? We ain't making it past 21. And I guess it's something a lot of people have been saying a lot, right? Speaking stuff into existence. I'm not for, I'm not really for the woo-woo stuff at this moment. I think it's a bit too raw to even talk about that sort of stuff. But if there is any lessons to be learned, it is maybe to like, but I guess in, in general, a lot of this generation, I look at someone like an Ian Connor is a good example. You know, they, they love a good last. I think, it's a weird kind of flex like everyone's trying to say something prophetic in their tweet so that if they do pass away they have some um, epic memory to like you know hold them at as opposed to like somebody retweeting some girl getting their head cracked open in the side of a curb you know on the street fight no one wants that so maybe that's the point of it but by and large you know i tend to be the kind of person that does avoid negative speak just because what's the point right life is negative enough i don't need to reinforce it by saying crazy stuff but also, I don't know, man. These guys are living life at 100 miles per hour, innit? Maybe life does seem a bit fleeting to them. You know, one moment you're sleeping on a on an air mattress somewhere on the floor in the middle of some nowhere town in America. Next moment, you're on a jet ski somewhere, you know, with a Instagram foot listening to your song on blast. I, I get life can change really quick and it can just seem so weird to them, but I'm just not somebody that speaks negatively about anything, even my own life, even with other people. I just try to keep it a bit neutral. Because I just know the power of the words, but I don't know, man. I don't know how much to read into all that stuff, but yeah. Move on to the article. Um, the song and EP was released in 2019, 2000, June 2000, June 11, June 19, 2018, the day after X was murdered. Um, they got a couple of tweets here from Lil Nas X and Camila Cabello saying good stuff, and yeah, man. Tired artist, I'm sure you guys are aware of Lucid Dreams. <laughs> And yeah, I've got nothing more to say, man, really. I think it's just it's just sad. It's just a sad state of events. And 
Yeah. I can just thoughts and feelings go out to his friends and family who have, you know, probably lost a very integral person in their crew. You seem like a really good, fun hang. Somebody that was, of course, insanely talented and, you know, the world was really his oyster. He had so much potential. So much untapped potential, really. And, you know, again, like I said, not time for drug PSAs and all that stuff. Let people grieve and then we can talk about it another day. But yeah, RIP Juice Ward, man. Gone but not forgotten. Gone but not forgotten. Um, Yeah, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Um, Okay, let's get some topics. Um, Let's just, yeah, get some topics. Um, You know, get a little bit positive for that because I, I don't want to get bummed out of the whole episode. Um, As per usual, if you guys are aware, listen to the show. I talk about streetwear culture art music fashion all that good stuff um, i try and encapsulate it under the streetwear umbrella because i feel that's the best way to kind of describe things but anything in between as per usual if you're listening via the podcast i've been like what you're hearing smash that like button uh or snow leave me a five star review and if you're watching via the youtube app smash that like button click subscribe so you can come back another time anyway let's get into it um Topic number one, I've got a lot of sneaker news to get through, so just bear with me for now. Number one topic to get through is uh, Blondie McCoy, your favorite um, hipster skateboarder, has now got a collaboration with Adidas SB. And they look pretty cool, man. I'm a big fan of these. Uh, they're like see-through superstars in the vein of some other see-through crepes you might have seen from other brands such as Nike in the past. Um, but these are pretty well done. So this is an article from Hypebeast. Um, the title says, Blondie McCoy's Ada Superstar sneaker set to release this week. Um, so a little surprise drop here. Um, we first heard reports of Bunny McCoy's first ever design of Ada Superstar silhouette this past July. Since then, there have been little to no news of the shoe's anticipated release. Recently, the multi-talented McCoy took to Instagram to relay that see-through iteration released this week, which is a nice surprise drop before Christmas. Uh, McCoy's Superstar silhouette features a transparent... Um, polyurethane upper tonal black stripes in uh and a white detailing blah blah, blah. here's a his uh, caption i like him man they look pretty cool they probably look the best i've seen of the see-throughs maybe because of the overall form of a superstar there's not so much um how to describe it without making it sound dumb there isn't as much surface area to cover for the see-through um whatever plastic or rubber they use i'm not sure if that is plastic right um on the upper so you can it can basically keep its form a little bit better because I remember I had the see-through Air Force Ones, and what I remember with those is that they used to fall into, they kind of folded into themselves quite easily, maybe because of the weight of the shoe, maybe because there was a lot more surface area in the, on the Air Force One to cover, or maybe because the fact that they've got stripes on the side of them, it kind of helps to kind of hold the shape up. But I like the, how they look. They look really cool. And I imagine they are. Is it, is it an A, that's SB? Is it a Superstar SB, or is it just a Superstar? I wonder. Or do they Superstar SBs come with a, with a fatter tongue? I don't know. Because I'd also think like, what what would they be like in terms of skateboarding, in terms of like you know getting um what you call it the little hole on your ollie and stuff or the little scuffs on the side? Would they get are they prone to that or is that little enforcement reinforcement here at the front of the shelter? I'm not too sure, but they look really cool. I like I like the actual look of them. The fact they got blondie here on the side is really cool, and I also like the color color combination. I think the the idea of having like a a really dark gums um sole with a shelter and then having the black stripes is really cool, white and black. And this super versatile shoe, some light pants and dark pants. I like what they look like. They look really nice. Um, I'm not a fan of the England tattoo, but, you know, he is from here. So what can you do? But, yeah, I like the shoe. I think he smashed it. He did it really well. So it says the following his caption. Oh, the novelty of feeling emotional with Rizian. Uh, my superstar will become available for purchase this Saturday, the 14th of December. And we will be screening a skate video in London tomorrow night. Okay, that's cool. So I guess it's this, this today, Monday, if you released that yesterday. So definitely check that out if you're that way inclined. But I like the shoe. Um, it's nothing about it being a superstar. Uh, sorry, a ska- uh, Adidas skateboarding shoe. It looks like it's just my, just regular inline Adidas original stuff, which is even more interesting because it means that the Adidas superstar shape will be probably the 80s one, so it'll be a bit more of a slimmer, thinner silhouette, which might not help someone like me with fat feet. But for those of you guys who can wear Converse's and do like to wear Vans old schools and stuff, you'll be super happy. But for guys like me that like to wear Air Forces and, you know, uh, pff, wallabies and stuff you're going to be pissed because I don't think the shoes are going to be for us but they look interesting I fucking love the shoe I wonder what they're going to look like once they get worn in uh, uh, hopefully he does a wear test or he posted pictures of him actually wearing a pair that he's been testing out or maybe a, a, a pair that he wore when he was filming a skate park it'd be cool to see what they look like scuffed up like what's going to happen with the uppers will they peel off because usually when you have an upper that isn't see-through plastic you usually have a little bit of a layer inside right I know from my my days in skating when you have the shoe and you had a bit of the holes on the side from you know from rubbing your toe on the grip tape when you're you know trying to flip or do an ollie whatever it may be 
usually there's a, there's a couple of layers underneath the top layer so there might be a couple you know paddings and bits of padding or whatever so i wonder what's happening with those or maybe nowadays you can get i'm not too sure I haven't looked online to see what skate um, gear people sell these days, but I wonder if there people are out there selling like um, <laughs> it sounds stupid, but like skateboarding socks, like socks with padding. Like, you know, and you can get those running socks that have the little bits of padding on it. I wonder if they have the same sort of thing with skateboarding socks, where it's got little thicker bits on it, which probably might not be the most comfortable stuff to wear underneath a shoe. But I don't know. Um, but I, I quite like them, and it reminds me of uh, some or some other. Uh, really influential see-through trainers back in the day um, or uh, especially Nike ones first of all the Air Forces that I had as well but I think I sold straight away I didn't keep them I think a, a friend of mine Marcus actually had a couple of pairs I think he wore them for a while Marcus but I didn't really wear mine um, and they used to really get remember they used to get always they would steam up really quickly um, that wasn't a fun thing but do you remember these these were the F I think they were the Fantastic Woman or something like that right yeah Fantastic Four Pack um, from Nike from 2006. Wow, man, that was an era, isn't it? So this was uh, four pairs of shoes. I'm assuming, yeah. There was an Air Max 90, Mr. Fantastic. There was a Air Force One, Miss Invisible Woman. There was a Dunk High, which is a great colorway, actually, this brown sort of colorway, the thing. And of course, there was the Human Torch, not Air Max 95. Really cool colorways, but um, this Air Force One, of course, was the standout piece. I think this sold out pretty quickly. Everyone, this I think was the era when people were wearing people still do that now i don't think they do right a lot of the hipsters in in london especially like to wear white socks with like dark shoes or white socks with reebok classics white and black you know that that thing is big the white the white especially the white nike socks but back in the day the thing that was popular was like you know pattern socks not weed leaf stuff but like other stuff like you know funny things i don't know spongebob square pants whatever it may be so wearing these type of trainers with those kind of socks was cool because you could always have different type you could have odd socks on Especially with shorts, people would love them. I'm surprised they haven't really come back in, in vogue, especially with the with the lads that like to go like IB and stuff with, you know, wearing short shorts. I think they would look really cool with those kind of style of shoe. Like ankle socks, patterned ankle socks and short shorts and massive fires. You know what I mean? Like, you know, shuffling somewhere in IB for they look pretty cool with those kind of lads, but I'm surprised that maybe because they haven't seen them or they're not re released, but they would look quite cool. And then the other see-through shoe that i thought was really cool was the clot air max ones which i had i think this is might have been the last shoe i queued for i'm gonna say maybe i think this might have been the last one um do you remember these the clot air max ones uh from 2006 so the, the, the there was twofold number one on the air force one we just saw recently they were just like a regular air force one with the see-through but these were an air max one that was non-linear so i think they I remember they were mucking around with that so it was basically no no landing on the f on the air max one upper it was just one basically the outer piece and that was it so they were super uncomfortable and the sizing was so weird because there was no padding on it so if you're a size 10 you might be a size 10 in the actual footbed but the apple was like so spacey um and the only and, and, and imagine it was better it was a bit better because it was only the top bit that was see-through the actual actual the entire toe box of the shoe was still the upper like I think new buck or suede version of whatever it may be but these were a big shoe i'm on the map on the insole these were a massive shoe uh, you didn't get this in the release i'm pretty sure it's a normal but i think there's a friends and family one but this was a big shoe again this might have been the last sneaker that i queued up for i'm pretty sure this might have been foot patrol as well i'm not too sure which shop it was i queued up outside of but this is definitely the last one one of my favorites as well and then lastly the other shoe that i thought was a real standout in terms of the see-through uh trend was the most recent see-through trend that i remember was a clot um so it was a comme de garçon dunk high that debuted i think during the comme de garçon home show right home plus show um this oh yeah this i remember it being one of the again um he's an underrated model for streetwear stuff you know little yai Maybe because he's a bit bigger now, he probably doesn't do as much, probably doesn't feel as comfortable, but he's underrated in terms of look, in terms of poses and stuff. I think he does the modeling thing of streetwear stuff really cool. I liked his uh, shoot that he did with, um, what's his name? With the Encarnas brand or whatever that brand was. He did something cool with that. And I, I really like his pose. I think it looks awesome. So it's a little, yeah, he's sitting on what looks like a Nike box, but it looks like a brick or something, right? Some sort of brick. And he's got the Comme de Garçon um, dunks on. So essentially they're black and white dunks with the panels that are meant to be white essentially just completely see-through they look really really cool i thought they're really amazing and obviously they debuted on the runway here you see them here being worn in a really cool way with some nice baggy socks like really really cool shoe and i liked it because oddly enough i don't know why maybe because they i'm not sure if they're higher than normal dunks but they kind of look a little bit like you know those dunk hills I remember Dunk Hill had a similar sort of colorway and again these sort of colorways don't really get too often because they usually tend to like splatter them with 
all sorts of nonsense colors and patterns but i love the two-tone dunks like the you know in the kind of the, the classic be true to your school dunk sb sort of vibe you know what i mean like the university sort of colorways like just two colors i think they, that's where they look their best again those combinations can be a bit you know can get a bit redundant after the period of time but i think they obviously do look and again it's inline dunks so they've got the best shape no need for that super fat tongue or you know wherever it may be in you know, the sbs i had previously and, and i've always found the sb dunks i don't know the uppers you should just again i don't know they didn't have a good structure to them maybe because they were usually always suede and new buck so they kind of tended to kind of you know go a bit flat but those, those are one of my favorite see-through shoes but again they're hard to wear man because they always tend to fog up when your feet are getting sweaty you just feel a bit gross wearing them so and again you don't see between people wearing these shoes considering how people love to talk about their sneakerheads, especially some of the rappers out there you don't really see them wearing this too often maybe because it's not too showy in it but i like them one of my favorites actually of recent years but yeah check out blondie mccoy superstars they'll be coming out so say the 14th didn't they? so keep an eye out for that if you want to get them and i guess follow them on the socials for more information cool let's move on uh and what else we have here oh this is the biggest news for me and something i've been looking forward for a long bloody time i had two pairs of these i had a fake pair i got from some china place and then I had a real pair that unfortunately the sole uh, peeled off uh, after maybe a couple of wears. So I'm so happy that these are back because you never usually get them online on eBay and it's hard to know if they're legit or not. And sometimes when they do appear on eBay, they're usually never in my size and usually way too expensive. And that shoe is the Black Cat Jordan 4s, yeah, which is essentially an all black Jordan 4. If you know anything about me, you'll know that my favorite shoes, I think, in the list, especially, um, especially for Nikes, I would say my favorite shoes are not in no order Air Max 90, Jordan 4, and Air Force One. Those are my my free staple shoes. I could probably wear any one of those shoes and still feel uh, for the rest of my life and still feel like I'm, you know, I've got the source, I've got the swag, and I'm doing the damn thing. I think the Jordan 4 bread is probably, you know, may, maybe hands down one of the top five colorways and models of all time. Uh, Air Max 90 Infrared is probably, you know, out, out of this world in terms of relevance, in terms of what it's done to the sneaker industry. And then when you look at Air Force One, you know, white on white, black on black, you can't go any wrong. And if you want to go a bit further, maybe black and white um, is one of those big shoes that you just can't go wrong on. You know, it's hard, It's really hard to get, uh, even though they try nowadays, Jordan Brand, they really try to fuck up the Jordan 4s. It's really hard to get the Jordan 4 colorway wrong. It's hard to get a colorway wrong on the Air Max 90. It's hard to, it's nearly impossible to get a color wrong on what i say on jordan one on the jordan no sorry on air force one as well it's nearly impossible it's really impossible especially the, how they panel it the shape of the shoe is just perfect and um yeah so news has come out that the black cat jordan fours are coming back out again so if all you guys have been waiting for them to come back out you are in luck um they've gone back to the og so they've got this um new box suede upper um, the only thing that I'm a bit bummed out on is that they haven't got Nike on the back. It's just a Jumpman logo, but you know that's no big deal. It's not like a, it's not like a big deal for me. It's not like I'm not gonna buy them because it doesn't have a Nike swoosh in it. I'm still gonna get a pair. But that would have been a perfect icing on the cake. I love the shape. I love that this pair. I'm not sure if it's because they retold them, but they look a little less bananary shape than my other Jordans that I got. Which the last pair of Jordan fours I might have had were the Defining Moments pack, maybe I think Jordan four. I had them in a two pack. I got a cup. I had I doubled up on those. I sold them because you know, I beat them into the ground. And that's the thing with Jordans. You can wear Jordans forever, smash them to pieces, but they still have quite a bit of resale value. I think I probably got my re I probably got retail priced them, even though I wore them well. And if you know me, if you know me, you know that I actually wear my trainers. I don't look after them like uh, you know, like one of those kind of, you know, um saran wrap sneakerheads i actually wear my stuff so for people to buy them again goes to show just how much value they hold. And sometimes as people also like to buy banged up Jordans um upper so they can clean them restore them i've seen on youtube and then add new, add kind of old school soles i've seen people do that as well that looks really cool but yeah um you got an include in, in uh all upper um an all new buck upper i'd say new buck or suede probably it's suede we'll probably say that um the lace days are like the shiny sort of plastic material obviously in the back you've got the uh jumpman logo of course like i said uh nike swoosh would have been bloody perfect but you know you can't beggars can't be choosers the only thing that's a bit myth about this is the tongue it looks a bit this is this is why it's really difficult to spot fake shoes because for the most part the stuff that's coming out of jordan brand's factory because these look like official again we don't know because sometimes um uh some of these sneaker instagram pages can sometimes inadvertently post 
uh, replicas of shoes that haven't been made yet and just post them up on social and people go with it and it hasn't been confirmed by their brands. But sometimes the reason why it's so confusing is because the little telltale signs you'd be able to tell that this shoe is legit you can't really tell on a fake shoe. Like, I don't know, sometimes a webbing on the side, right? They'd say, this is a total way to say the way it goes up and how it goes down. But then the big thing that you used to always be able to tell if it was a fake Jordan uh, 4 was the tongue. Usually the, the legit ones had like a really, 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 really smooth round tongue here at the top. But look at this. It's, it's essentially like a like an ace of spades, isn't it? Look how pointy it is at the top there. It shouldn't be that pointy, really, if it's, if, if it's quote unquote a legit one. If you go on Nike Talk, and you see some of the older threads from back in the day, they would say there was a, the, the telltale signs of like a legit check. But sometimes these factories, especially with the Nike ones, they do sometimes have anomalies, they do sometimes have errors in stuff they produce. And I guess because they can't write off a whole bunch of stuff, it's going to cost them a lot of money, just release them anyway. And then you end up with them full of market, we end up with a, with a market full of legit Jordan shoes that look like they could be fake. So that's the only issue I have with some of the stuff coming out nowadays. But Again, like I said, beggars can't be choosers. It's, I'd rather pay £125, £135, whatever this is going to be worth uh, retail-wise, than have to go on StockX and pay, you know, 700 for a, a pair that came out in 2004 or something. I mean, that's not worth it at all. But yeah, for, so far, so good. I love it. Completely up, all black upper, uh, triple black, you know, no white bits involved at all. I loved how they didn't try and um, switch out the color of the bubble or do some nonsense with the lining to just re release an OG shootout. I think is one of my favorites. And of course, I think the white one is another favorite of people's own. And I had the pair of those two that I unfortunately sold because they were a bit too big for me. But again, I'm a big fan of these. I can't wait for them to come out. Um, what's the article say from Hype Beast here? One of the most um, unmissed makeups during for Black Cat there. Inspired by one of Mac Jordan's many nicknames, the pair is certainly one of the sneakers. Of the updated Jordan 4, predominantly embellishing a bold, bolder black makeup than its predecessor, also boasts the same construction of the original. Uh, check out the Jordan Black Cat 2020 retro. It's going to come out February 22nd on Nike.com, so definitely check that out. £190. Oof, it's a lot more money. So, what, 180 probably, I say? UK, 180 170 for Jordan 4 retail price. So, yeah, it's February 22nd um cut was that week after valentine so that should be a cool little present for all of you guys and girls out there but yeah one of my favorite jordans again see the shape is a lot better man on this retro i'm not sure if they've updated the tooling on them but there's a lot more of a flatter silhouette there compared to my defining moment jordan 4 let me see if i can get that up and just compare it side by side jordan 4 bread defining moments right Defi is it the one? defining moments pack i'm pretty sure that's the one It came in a pack. What was it? What's the pack that I had? It had another Jordan in the pack involved in it. Or am I bugging out? Yeah, it's the Defining Moments pack. So this is the one I had, right? I had this. Let me see if I can get it up here. Do you guys to see here? Uh, let me see. Yeah, so that's the Jordan I had, right? The Defining Moments pack. So you had... So it, it was basically two Jordans that made up the number 23. So if you look at that, you zoom in a little bit. Number one, the, the tongue obviously is a little bit more smoother than the other Jordan we saw before. And you could tell even from just looking from this side, it's a weird angle to check it, but it does come up a little bit more. It's a bit more banana -y. Now I'm not sure if they've got like a an insert on the other Black Cat 4s that makes them a bit flatter on the forefoot, this bit here. But you can definitely tell there's a bit more of a banana silhouette on this Jordan 4 compared to this here. It's a lot more flatter. It's a bit more of a sleeker silhouette, even from that. What's the other angle that can show a little bit? Yeah. Look, compare, see, compare that to that. They're definitely different. That's definitely more of a Bernard. Definitely comes up a bit more here. You can tell this bit right there. Definitely points up a little bit more. But yeah, I'm a fan of them, man. I can't wait to see what they look like in real life. And that's definitely a pair I'm buying without a shadow of doubt. I'm going to put money aside for that right now and just kind of cop it straight away without even blinking. Probably end up doubling up. That's a shoe you end up doubling up on. Remember that was a big thing back in the day. You used to always double up on shoes because you never knew if Nike... Because Nike had a tendency of always dropping a retro of a shoe. Um, first, no, no, dropping it, dropping the rest of the shoe first, but dropping in limited quantities and not having that, not basically restocking it like throughout the season. So then you end up, it end up kind of just selling out slowly. And then by the time you end up wearing in, wearing out your pair, like imagine the air stab retro that I had, which I still regret selling to that to this day. I regret not buying another couple of pairs of them because by the time 
the, the other models came out, they weren't re- retroing other, they weren't retroing anymore. But, but as time went on, they don't retro the same uh, original colors anymore. They'll just go for, you know, the paint by numbers issues back in the day or the paint by numbers iterations uh, the further time goes on. So if you want an OG colorway of something, when it comes out, buy that pair and buy doubles of it because it's not going to come out again for a while unless it's a fucking safari or something you know they, they drop those every two years but everything else you have to kind of struggle for like when's the last time you saw an infrared in mx90 do you know what i mean so when it comes out buy uh buy two if you can so the us have one there like I, even a tom Sachs um mars yard that i have luckily they're coming out again but that's another shoe do you know what i mean just buy it again because you know if they bring out that model again it's just going to be another crazy wacky colorway that you're probably not going to be a fan of but yeah black hat jordan 4 is coming out february 22nd 2020 that is a big, big look, man. I'm a big fan of that shoe. I love it, love it, love it. Anyway, let's move on. What else we have here? Oh, another one. Another big uh, sh- dunk that I'm sure you guys will be familiar with and hyped about. Uh, the Nike Dunk Biotech. This is a big shoe for anyone that's a big um, dunk fan. Obviously, somebody that's... You know what the, you know the Biotech reminds me of? It reminds me of the heady days of like Tokyo street fashion. I'm, let me see if I can find a flipping image of somebody wearing them. Uh, Biotech Dunk. Uh, Tokyo street style. Let's see if I can find somebody wearing it, like an old school magazine picture, because they they were the best. They were the, some of the best um, versions you see somebody wearing a Viatech Dunk. They just looked incredible. Uh, so I can find them now. Tokyo street style. No, no, no. Oh, look at the Atmos MX One. I had that. Didn't I? Sh- quit selling that. Where is it? Any images of that? Probably not in it. Probably gonna have to go on something else and double check that. Let's see if I can find it. Launches. Hand on. Let's see. Tokyo Street Style, right? Okay, it's Arena, right? Tokyo Street Style, uh, Nike Dunk. Let's see if someone's got a dunk on. See what they look like. Because that's that that reminds me of a uh, old school era. Where are they? Anyway, let's back in the back to the Viotech Dunk news. Um, yeah, this is the, the this was the site I remember always used to having to go on. Do you remember checking this site out? Uh, uh, stylearena.jp you'd go in different areas and check people's um, outfits and what they're wearing and stuff you know what areas you've got you got Harajuku you got Shibuya you got Omo Tesando Omo Tesando uh, Daka, Dakanyama Ginza all these different areas you can definitely click on and check out but yeah let's go back to the Viotex so the Viotex dunks are coming out when are they due to come out um where to buy 10 a.m blah blah release date 10th of december okay so they're coming up really soon so definitely keep an eye out for those if you want them um official images of nike dunk low biotech look at that that's a fucking beautiful shoe uh texas the following re- re- very few sneak releases earn a distinction of being cult classics let alone being popular in the first place this the dunk uh biotech dunk however are the extremely rare exception as they garnered an inside only following on the two separate occasions the first came in the earlier part of the decade of the nike dropped these overly colored dunks in japan as the sneaker factors grew to feverishly hunt them down the low top retro basketball shoe oh yeah i should remember i remember you couldn't get a pair of these over a size 10 or something i remember when they first dropped i think that was probably why because it was japanese exclusive and then by the time they re-released they just went bananas um the second wave arrived thanks to virgil abloh as a off-white founder and louis vuitton figurehead put all the new generation onto silhouette via subtle and possibly strategic placement on his instagram Instagram. It seems the swoosh has been paying attention to the murmurs on the streets because of Vitex Dunk are making its first overlap release on December 2010 on Sneakers app. So, I guess Virgil wearing a pair of Vitex Dunks probably helped them come back in. I don't think anything is done by chance. If you know anything about Nike marketing, you know that it's all quite strategic. Um, so, if the fact that they allowed Virgil to wear a pair probably meant that they were already going to release them for a while. It wasn't just him wearing a pair of retros, and I think it, it ties in with his. Obviously, he's doing another off. He's doing another, another collaboration with Nike, isn't it? Right, not the Futuros, but I'm pretty sure he's gonna wear. I'm pretty sure he's had on a pair of Dunk Highs before that he's going to try and debut. But I think this is the image of him wearing them. I think I don't know when this was, but I remember him posting this on Instagram a while back of him wearing a pair of Viotech Dunks here. In this image as you can see but i'm pretty sure he's got a pair of dunk sbs high sbs coming out in a while ago right he's got yeah this picture here of them him wearing a pair of um is it michigan's or something are they michigan's do you remember this pack that came out ages ago yeah michigan yeah michigan dunk sb highs from back in the day he's got another pair of them are they leather as well or is that suede yeah he's done leather too so this, this the shape should be a lot better too 
And then of course, the Vitek ties in with this Nike MX90 Vitek that came out a while back, um, which I'm sure people were pumped on. I'm surprised it, it didn't do as well on resale sites. It's a really nice colorway. But maybe people are not that hot on um, Nike MX 90s. But yeah, this dunk is coming out too, right? The collaboration he's got with Futura, which looks incredible. But yeah, the Vitek dunk, going back to this article, um, it's coming out at select retailers and Nike Lab. Um, the date is the 10th of December. They're going to be priced $120. But yeah, an absolute classic. Again, one of the... one the, This other, this shoe also reminds me of an era where I remember um, on Crooked Tongues, there was a guy called, I forgot his name, but he was a like a little short white dude. I think he works at Converse now. He did a custom of a Nike Dunk that he painted. And he basically painted them in Vitek colors. But then essentially he flipped the other, the other, the right shoe, the other way, inverse. So instead of it being a... Uh, red toe box will be blue and this bit will be red like you just flip the colors like you know inverted them and they look banging you just like really really cool um and you don't see that off happen too often but yeah an absolutely classic shoe again in a classic dunkish dunk the sh- dunk low shape no need for a fat tongue so you don't get that gargantuan sort of forefoot and um, you just get a nice sleek silhouette and again just really comfortable shoe um, much more comfortable as a silhouette than a bloody Jordan 1 or whatever it may be. Less pointy, a little bit more boxy in a toe box. So for someone like myself that's got fat feet, it's going to work perfectly for, perfectly for me. And again, just a really perfect, versatile shoe. As proven by this picture of Virgil wearing them, right? What's he got on? He's got a pair of, like, what? Combat trousers? Army pants, whatever he's got on wearing them, right? Where is it? Where's that image? It's on here. We just saw here a while back. What was it? Yeah, he's wearing a pair of, like, you know, army pants type shoes or the fitness one right yeah some combat show they look fairly good wearing you know those kind of pants and i think some normal trousers would work pretty well with them too i wish i could find a picture of somebody like a old school from just japan era so i can find it japan dunk biotech so i can find somebody wearing them because that was a good era man that street style seeing people wear them like especially shop style start wear like I would probably have them in magazine I have here. They're sort of like um, my Asani and that sort of stuff, but it'd be difficult to find it right now on Q. But that was a oh, that was a good era, man. What a good, good era of sneakers from back in the day. Can I find them? Anyone got a picture? Nah. No one's got a picture here. What's this? Nike Duck Low Glaunches. Okay, there's there's a little image here of people wearing. I don't know who these people are, but there's an image of them, of these cool individuals wearing a pair of Biotech Dunks here that stood up together again even just through this dude's outfit there you can tell how good they look versatility in terms of outfit he's got a pair of black pants on some patchwork type bomber jacket it looks fairly decent there this guy's got some digi camo pants on right looking no some tree bark sort of looking joggers on and i think the girl at the back probably has some jeans on as well so yeah they look fairly cool in in most of the different sort of street star pitch you've seen and even just the mx90 is a good example right they look fairly decent with just black pants on so they will look pretty cool once they come out i'm interested to see how people uh drop these actually but one of, definitely one of my favorites again it's gonna be a big year for dunks it seems like next year isn't it we're gonna see a lot of dunks a lot of iterations of what is the jordan one 35th anniversary so a lot of dunks as well so it's gonna be absolutely packed so definitely keep an eye on that yeah here's another edition i think this is from end right that's a good 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 hood okay let's check the good hood pictures from them is this some a good hood issue? So they're launching these as well. So that should be cool. Good hood are launching. Oh, okay. The time has gone. Okay, for twelve hours. So they're gonna the, the raffle's gonna close very soon for these. Um, who are these people from Bone Soda? Um, they are debuting the shoe, and they look they look great here, innit? No, they look fucking banging. White pants, pair of black pants. It all looks really, really good. Again, a classic dunk. I'm, I'm, I'm annoyed that they haven't relaced them. This is the thing that just pisses me off about sneaker, um, you know, pictures and stuff and lifestyle images. Relace the shoes, man. Over, under, over, under. The way they laced it, it dropped. It's just horrendous. But again, isn't it? these guys won't care. They're probably going more seated anyway. So they're probably telling me to go and fuck myself. So, which, you know, which is fair. <laughs> but they look fucking cool. I love that shoe. Um, yeah, 12 hours to go and uh, what was this at on the Good Hood store? So definitely check them out if you're that way inclined. But definitely a classic, in my opinion. One of my favorite shoes out there going. A sick, sick collab, man. A sick, well, collab, a sick retro from Nike and something. Again, like I said, it definitely shows that it's a big year for um, Dunks. It's going to be a big year for Dunks, a big year for Jordan 1. So if you don't like those shoes and you hate them, I think now's the time to bury your head somewhere in the sand because you're going to see a lot of them in the next few months or so. Um, let's carry on. Before I have to duck out. What else do we have here? Oh, actually, you know what? Let's talk about my history of dunks. I put a, I put a list on here, right? 
What was that? Um, okay, this is a little article from Sneaker News that goes through some of the other gems from the whole Dunky era that I feel you guys are familiar with. This is uh, what the Dunk. Here are some forgotten Nike Dunk Low gems from the past. Um, so this is the following: one of the big catalysts of the sneakerhead collector craze in the very early 2000s was a Dunk Low. Yeah, that was. Do you remember seeing people's? Do you remember? Do you remember Dame Dash's collection of Dunks? Oh, fucking hell! Let's check that when someone found them in a storage unit um dame dash nike dunk collection let's see if i can find that image someone someone had a storage of basically all of dame dash's old shoes and it had like some insane sbs and shit you remember that yeah this is it right and it has some legit some legit fire in here bruv some legit fire that was the one Someone found his stuff in storage. I think he didn't really want it and ended up just reselling the whole thing. It's probably worth, I don't know, maybe half a mil in value. I think there might have been some Heineken dunks in there as well. So, And if you know anything about Heineken hunks, Heineken, Heineken hunks, Heineken dunks, sorry, you know that they go for a lot of money. So let's see, right? So let's. this is the image from, what's that? Hip Hop Wired. Dame Dash auctioning off his massive... It didn't, it's not him auctioning it. I think if you listen to his interviews, I think he said something along the lines of it was his old storage unit he didn't pay the he didn't keep up with the payments so that usually after a period of time when you've been worn and maybe he changed the dress he didn't get the mail and essentially whoever owns the building just takes your things and just auctions them off to kind of get back the money they've lost out on them and sometimes you know it's full of shit but other occasions just can be like you know a warehouse full of this stuff plaques and stuff and all this other mad shit he just completely gave up so yeah you've got some crazy shit in there like you got some preem dunks undefeated dunks like just some nutty stuff in that collection like stuff that would easily get you i don't know 30 grand without even blinking especially in this era of kids who don't really know that much about old school sneakers and you put those up on like you know on StockX, they'll go for p so yeah loads of good stuff on there as well let me see if i can just find an image of them all together i'm not sure if i can find them here but there was loads of loads of loads of shoes on there that i thought were just banging it's got those Air Force Ones in the front there that I like. Another there, some just some banging shoes all together, man. Like wow, wow, wow. But yeah, that was a good era for dunks. But let's go back to the list. Um, early two thousands. Through simply searching through Nike Talk and eBay, simply because Nike was putting out some of the hot GR goodness. Uh, today, Nike revealed that their free code G iterations of Nike Dunk clothes inspired by past collaborations with Japanese sneaker boutiques. Conjure up the fun memories of almost two decades ago. So here's a quick rundown of the best dunk clothes iterations ever. Number one, they've got Splatter Dunk, um, designed by California-based artists Undefeated. Uh, they've got Silver Surfers. They've got these are Yankees, which is one of my favorites. And again, that was a real good favorite in terms of a Air Force One colorway. There's a similar one here in the Dame Dash collection, which you can just see above there. The same sort of colorway, the Yankees sort of colorway, similar but not the same, right? Sort of like inversed. Um, I thought that was a big shoe. Um, then you've got the um, the Argon two tone dunks were all the rage, and none were fresh as the Argon, featuring two refreshing shades of blue. Argon dunks, a Japanese exclusive release. Like all the Code JP Japanese, um, all the Code JP stuff was so good. Probably the best you've seen. Of course, you got the Eric Hayes dunk clothes. That were another big one. Um, you got the Curries. Oh, the Alohas. I had a pair of these. Oh my God, man. Some memories of these coming up. Um, Ultraman. I didn't have those. I had the denims. I didn't have the Halloweens. I didn't have the dirty denims. I didn't have the city attacks. I had the Sambas. Mama mia, that's a good era, man. Samba, like many other dunks in the past. Samba dunk 2009 was a Japan exclusive. Like, look at that colorway. All these colorways, right, would be such a cool thing to flip on an Air Force One if you went to an ID. Like some of these are some fresh colors where you should do on a, a Nike ID or something. Like that would look so good on an Air Force One. Even Air Force One may be high actually with the, with the nylon strap. They look perfect with them. So yeah, it's definitely the year of the, it's definitely going to be the year of the dunks um, next year. So definitely um, try and get yourself a pair or try and get involved in that. But the, I've seen quite a few on eBay that go for a pretty decent price. So if you're, if you're not that bothered about, if you're, if you're, if you're not that keen on them, then definitely check those out. Um, my number one dunk I think of all time high if I had to choose is definitely the Pharrell dunk high like one of my favorite cut of course I'm a sucker for black uppers anyway but I just think a combination of it being a translucent icy sole the NRD logo on the side uh, the silver swoosh the red laces just an absolutely epic epic shoe and they still go for a pretty penny online now um, this is from sneaker news it says the following before the air yeezy became the official signature shoe for the non-athlete hip-hop celebrity nike doubled in collaborations 
with an impressive list of hip-hop influential people. Uh, Pharrell and Nerd deserved a good chunk of credit for bringing in a fresh alternative sound to the genre, conveniently defined by perpetual beats and, and whatever. They, oh, commonly referred to as a dunk loaf, dunk high, sorry, Pharrell. These limited edition dunks were actually a collaboration with NRD as a whole. Uh, it features the NRD logo em embroidered on the thread, a tone of black upper. Just hundred, just 1,050 were individually numbered pairs exist. Released in 2004 at select um, Nike stores, um, currently the floor dance command at least $700 on a sneaker market. And due to the rarity and the steam nature of the collaboration, the number isn't likely to dip yet. Because all the people that actually had these wore them. It was one of those collaborations, like similar like the Tom Sachs, like the Nike Mars Yards. Like there's there's a couple of shoes that come out. Like I look at the, you know, the Sean with Wotherspoons, Air Max Ones. 97 sort of hybrid thing there's a few shoes when they come out people actually wear them so it's quite hard to get like an actual brand new pair of shoes um from that era because people wore theirs into the ground and some of the bigger sizes weren't especially the one the size i have like a size 10 were the ones that tend to get worn the most you have a smaller size people might have them in their archive have them in their collection but a size like mine is nearly impossible to find an actual brand new pair um but yeah an absolutely brilliant shoe man it's just beautiful what well, is like a kind of like a was that like a tumbled leather upper or a, I don't know what that what that is sort of like a, a fake emboss fake like a flake lizard skin I don't know what that is it's just beautiful shoe like one of my favorites and then lastly the other shoe that I thought was one of my favorite dunks as well during that era was these bad boys if I can find them and get this off the screen save some RAM but this is my other favorite do you remember these the, the undefeated dunk highs the NLs, the non, 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 lean, non, la, no lining, non linear, whatever it's called. This is a classic, man. Bloody hell. I remember having these from Foot Patrol. So, classic revisited from Sneakers again. Undefeated in Nike Dunk High NL 2005. Again, that colorway nowadays would absolutely cause riots on the streets. Back then, imagine what that must have been like. But imagine now where people want to wear just crazy colorways and stuff. And again, just a, like, just a clever, I'm not sure what the inspiration of it was. Maybe we find it in the text, but. Just the color placements, just beautiful. The choice of materials, just fucking gorgeous. Even the fact that it's got like a black stitching on the midsole here, um, on this sort of like light lime green midsole bit is a really cool contrast. I love everything about it. So this is text on the following. We started with a firm pod that's one and continued with MX1 for the third week. We're focusing on another sneaker model that deserves a lot of credit, the Nike Dunk High from 86. The Dunk High considered to be... Da, da, da. Let's see what the text is. Come on, let's see. In 2005, Undefeated teamed up with Nike on a Dunk High slimmer NL form. The Dunk NL stood for a non-liner, which features an interior stripped of its thick padding and achieved a sleeker profile. Yep, I love that. A precursor to the current deconstructed Dunk Highs. Undefeated in an uninhibited um, use of bright colors was match perfectly with the supreme materials on the shoe which in features a highly quality brown leather on the toe which i think is similar to maybe the curry dunks right that sort of leather Do you remember the curry dunks um they kind of wore those in and they kind of gave you a little bit and some nice creases and shit and when you put some um, leather ointment in it they buffed up really nice too um some high quality brown leather on the toe a wine colored heel a calf skin leather used on a toe box and tongue bloody hell this 2000 piece masterpiece was a tier zero release and limited to 5,000 units bloody hell man i didn't know it was that limited so again that was just the sneaker industry a lot of this stuff was just like supply and demand right there was only i don't know uh, probably a 20,000 or 100,000 sneakerheads worldwide. Now there's probably a million because everyone essentially that buys Yeezys is essentially a sneakerhead, right? So it's, it's a lot more competition out there for shoes and even just for customers, isn't it? Um, the dunk, uh, the, the 5,000 units worldwide and surely stands as the definitive dunk of our time. Rife with colorways and materials and seemingly adapting the NL construction without shedding the dunk's original heritage of basketball. Um, Peep this classic colorway and below embrace yourself for another week of all time greats here on the classic review. But yeah, definitely one of my favorite dunks, man. An absolutely boss kind of color placement. Again, they're not the most comfortable shoe in the world. The sizing was a bit weird because again, there's no lining, no padding. So you have to really be careful on the sizing that you got. If you were a size up, if you went, don't order size up, order your true, your true size. Cause after a period of time, they do kind of end up, you know, um, relaxing a bit and getting a little bit wider, especially on a four foot. But just in terms of colorways used, Maybe one of my favorite collaborations, maybe to date. Again, one of the best um, from that era, man. So definitely check that out if you're that way inclined. Definitely um, available probably now on StockX and stuff. I wonder what, how much they go for. Actually, on StockX, probably a big chunk of money, no? Let's see if we can find those on StockX. See how much they go for. I'm gonna say about five. Is the if the if the Pharrell Dunk is seven hundred, these have to be less than that, right? Because the Pharrells are probably a little bit more hyped than these. 
these don't have they don't have any sort of embellishment to tell you they're undefeated dunk highs there's nothing on there right it's just i'm pretty sure let's see if i can find that nike dunk uh, nike dunk nl where is it oh it's not there well why is it not there nike dunk undefeated there we go how much did he's got for oh yeah okay that's not too bad isn't it seven three hundred three hundred eighty quid for my size especially or oh, is it all sizes i'm not signing am i okay so let's see if you all ask this uh let's get this screen up so no one can see my username let's log in here okay size eight is 380 what's what's my size gonna be probably about what 400 maybe which is not too bad if you can if all things considered isn't it? considering you're gonna get like a one-off shoe that not a lot of people have I think that's a pretty fair price to pay, in my opinion. I'd be well up for that. Oh, ho, ho, my my shoe, my my size is a thousand pounds, so they're worth more than the Pharrell Dunks. That is insane, isn't it? Mama mia! So let's see what the all the prices are saying here. Jesus, look at that! A thousand quid in my size. That's nuts. Let's see what you would ask. So it's size eleven, eight six, eight sixty is the ox price. Wow. That's a lot, isn't it? That is a lot. But yeah, it's a big shoe, though. It's a bloody big shoe. And de definitely something that a lot, a lot of people would have. Definitely a one-off. You wear these on the red carpet. People will be busting their heads open. You know what I mean? Even if it's a good street star pick, people will be going crazy about these. You, you know, you could probably match these up really nice with a, a couple of good Dreams Van Noten shirts. You know, if you're that way. If you're, if you're a matching McPherson type of dude. But for somebody like myself, just putting these on and having a good outfit will just swag them out, and, you know, regardless. But yeah, definitely one of my favorites. I love them. Okay, let's move on. Um, what else we have here? We have opening ceremony. Um, Hoka une 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 une, where right, as they pronounce them, one one. Um, a cool shoe, man. Again, um, I, I I'm sure a lot of people that wear hookers, especially um, non runners, tend to get them because of the collaborations they've done. I think they've done a good. Was it United United Arrows? Some Japanese retailer did them first. A short triple black shoe that was really popular with a lot of um, uh, street style of a lot of uh, fashion YouTubers and shit. But uh, these sort of like take the same premise as those. You have them in a sort of boot model that I think a lot of people favor and in completely white or off white sort of color. It looks really cool. Opening ceremony, I've not really heard of opening ceremony too much in it. They've been a bit quiet lately, isn't it? Remember, they were they were doing every collaboration under the sun. Maybe they're, they're trying to maybe put rain things back in a bit and bring things in house, but. They were really big on the scene, man, for a while. Vans, collaborations, like all sorts of nonsense, isn't it? They seem to have kind of took their foot off the pedal a bit. Maybe it's purposely done, but this is a news from Hype B says, the hook it, un one one, is how you pronounce it, right? Uh, taps opening ceremony once again for a sleek, tall, ultra high boot. Like, again, well, probably one of the favored models, I think, in streetwear and sneaker world. I've seen a couple of collaborations of these. Actually, I'm pretty sure someone else did a, 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 a tall, ultra high. Let's see if we can find this on high because I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm not wrong here. There's a few other collaborations that have happened with this tall, ultra high. Um, yeah, so there's one here, the triple black. That's the one I've seen everyone wearing on, on street, on kind of the fashion YouTubers and there's another one too i think it was united arrows right okay on it on let's see i think it was a japanese brand let's see what japanese brand just collaborated with them this yeah there's two tone one the kind of military colorway then there was a collaboration with a brand it's an engineered garment so they did a collaboration with um hoka and then you've got another this the other colorway that everyone was wearing again that kind of weird gray colorway engineered garments again that's it right Jap just japanese okay very on brand but this is the opening ceremony one we're talking about here so again, um, you've got this tall ultra boot high in a sort of off-white sort of colorway, like a sailly kind of color, which I like to, I like to look at. Instead of it being just triple white, you've got these nice little off-white panels on the side of them, which look really cool. I love the shoot itself. This dude wearing a, a sort of string vest with a white, with a gray suit, which looks perfect. I wonder if the suit is a is an open ceremony suit too, or just a suit they've done. They just pulled from the, the, the stuff they got on the buying racks. But yeah, it's a really nice model, man. I like how they look, especially with the suit, actually. It's actually a good little um, clash. This essential shoe that's essentially more of like an athletics cross-training cross, cross training suit or cross-running shoe. And it's paired up with like a nice tailored suit. I love the contrast between those two, to be honest. It looks really nice. Um, let's go back to the article. Um, after open ceremony, joined athletic brand hooker only for a two total takes in the Bondi 5. The duo have teamed up once again for a fresh update on the... Okay, what's the Bondi 5 they did? I, didn't, I don't remember seeing that. What was that one? Hmm. 
is that what we just saw that kind of low shoe what's a bundy okay so they did them on a low as well so they're just taking that same sort of inspiration and put them in a high which looks probably a little bit better than the low um merging utility and style the hiking boot receives a sleek update upgrade with a hookah trail running comfort and traction arriving in a white nimbus cloud colorway the sturdy boost the full grain leather and a textile upper with a faded hooker branding for increased traction and support and grip the boot is suited with triple density midsole and a vibrant mega grip outsole the flexible color finishes on the look and providing ankle support without added restrictions with event lining that allows your extra breathability and weatherproofness. But yeah, I love them, man. Retaining a 260 USD, the Open Ceremony Hooker Ultra Ultra Tro Boot will be available to purchase on the site, on their site in the Open Ceremony. Yeah, but definitely one of my favorites, man. I love this. Really good way to end the year, isn't it? When are they going to be available? Uh, February 2, oh, okay, February the 6th. So next year again, another big shoe to check out next year when the season starts to spring up a bit. But yeah, they'll look great. Not sure if um, sneakers are going to like them because they, they, they're probably they're going to catch a lot of dirt similar to the, again, I've mentioned the Mars Yards <laughs> so many times. You can tell some of my favorite shoes of recent years, but they definitely catch a lot of dirt in the midsole. So it's not a shoe to keep super clean. But I think in terms of, you know, these are, this is a perfect shoe for Fashion Week. If you're perusing around Paris Fashion Week, going from show to show, being on your feet all day long, and you want a couple of versatile shoes just to wear all day, maybe a smart pair of, you know, I don't know, Chelsea boots or something. Or a pair of tassel loafers would be quite really cool, and then maybe a a nice chunky pair of you know hooky on a, on a you know especially highs will go really well in most outfits with some you know tailored pants or some bagger pants will look pretty cool. Even skinny jeans will look pretty cool. And these I know it's sacrilege to say skinny jeans now because everyone's offered them, but they look really cool in some slimmer profile of jeans as well. But yeah, definitely check those out, man. A really cool colorway, that really cool collaboration. I'm a big fan of these. I like how they look. Moving on. Um, what else do we have here? Edison Chen and Jordan One collab. Are you a fan of these? Um, I am just because I like Edison Chen. I've, I'm a big fan of. I think I've been rooting for this guy ever since he went through that controversy. Went through back in the day with you know with the girls and that laptop stuff. I think he did a really. He really fought back well. Um, he didn't let the narrative. He didn't let the blogs dictate the narrative. And essentially, he's, t- he's he's turned into a much better person, isn't it? Really through that controversy. He's done nothing but good stuff just to, like, you know, give back to the community and shit. So I'm happy that he's basically doing this. Um, uh, da, 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 da. So this collaboration, I'm not sure what the point of it is, but I'm all for it. I think it's got the... He's taking inspiration or it's basically following a trend of other sneaker collaborations where the upper was essentially a kind of tearaway, cutaway sort of thing. And we've got two stories here that kind of detail it from Hypebeast, of course um one is it they're coming out early so this is one this is one of him the lookbook i pretty like because i quite like his poses he's very um cool streetwear pose that he does um so this is from hype beast take a closer look at the instant chen jordan one mid fearless let's take a bigger picture here you've got this weird sort of like what's that you get that from um uh chinese stores isn't it what is that is it like a you get a little is it a bracelet i had i had a bracelet maybe with that sort of similar sort of coin just in the middle of the lace there here that reminds me of that. So you've got this amazing sort of like authentic satin textile on the upper. Uh, silver with a black. Oh, look at that. The swoosh is embroidered. Interesting. Okay. An embroidered swoosh with a black tongue and black laces. And obviously like a, the satin on the inside um, lining as well with a blood red outsole. Um, classic really. Oh, wow. Look at the swoosh. It's sort of... Uh, sort of stitched in and it fades out as it goes to the back of the hill tab that is incredible yeah i remember that coinish that little circle thing i'm pretty sure you get it on bracelets or something again they haven't relaced the shoes it's such a pet peeve of mine if you're gonna do product shots relace the shoes properly man god damn it oh but yeah um i love the shoe and supposedly you can tear them away on the upper so you can basically expose uh, bits of underneath of the shoe by tearing it away and kind of picking away at it and burning it and of course he's edison chen the main man sitting on the basketball court with the shoes on now i love the blood red sole that's bloody awesome maybe taking information from chinese new year but let's let's take a look at the article itself what information do they have here for us continuing his release of the silk road royale mark sneakers um clock founder clock co-founder edison chen has teamed up with the jordan brand edge on one mid for the fearless ones collection uh centered around the message of internationalism and ex- internalism and externalism found in clock's recent nike sneaker releases the shoes are inspired by the chinese concept of yin and yang with a peel of uppers okay so the white bits the yin and the black bits are yang underneath i'm assuming right the upper of the shoe is done in silver woven nylon that expresses the 
uh, Silk Road Royale pattern and that can be removed to reveal a black and gold premium leather construction. Oh, it's leather underneath. Bloody hell. Le, le, le. Um, detailing comes in the form of a fadeaway stitches, swoosh, and a Chinese coin bearing the uh that symbol drawn on one in china okay wow attached on the black flat flat laces rounding up the design of the shoes jumpman logo you know what might have been cool the laces maybe some round nylon tubular ones or something they might have been pretty cool i don't know maybe i'm wrong on that i think that look well, it's pretty awesome um they're gonna be out december the 6th so it's already they're out already so they're already gone um oh december 7th from the sneakers app as well so they probably already sold out now because clot shoes just do stupid numbers when they come out but yeah, they're banging in it. Look at that. That's so cool. I love that. How you can expose different bits of it and still have the little white uh, sort of like tubing bits on the outside of the stitching. They look cool. Really, really nice. You tear it away. It sort of fades out there. They look amazing, isn't it? I love that. Really cool design. Um, so 12 City Air Jordan 1, SC Jordan S will release worldwide and juice stores blah, blah blah but yeah one of my favorite collections so far man i think he smashed that that one he did really well another it's another image of it as well i think it look incredible again the lacing is terrible on the product shots but you know it is what it is they're due to cut they already come out i'm sure they sold out straight away for the most part but yeah they are banging we're gonna see so many jordan ones in it they're gonna be everywhere I'm, we've seen a lot of new balances seeing a lot of jordan ones a lot of dunks those are probably going to be the big shoes we're going to see in the uh, next year especially the early part of next year the first quarter and shit you can see a lot of jordan ones a lot of dunks <laughs> oh, a lot of new balances coming out but I, I i don't mind it man i think it's all good i like even like the panties got on as well i probably part of their collection to tie in with it but yeah edition chen's always a big floss when it comes to dropping shoes anyway so no surprise there banging 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 trainers man let's see what he posts on his instagram regarding it did he post anything more I'm pretty sure they probably sold out in bloody minutes, isn't it? But yeah, some other images of people wearing them again here. But yeah, they look banging. I like them, man. I like them. I like them. Check them out if you're that way inclined, man. Um, and I think that's it, you know? That's it. Let's leave it there. The Excellence Eagle Show episode number 268. As per usual, thanks so much for tuning in. If you're listening via the podcast app, please, please leave me a five-star review so people can find the show. If you're watching via the YouTube, smash that like button, click subscribe. If you want some more information regarding myself, check out my website, excellencezingle.com. You'll be able to find links of my DJ mixes, which I've got a new one out at the moment, which is Test Mix episode number 32. Check that out. Loads of nice disco. I'll put it in the show notes for you guys to hear yourselves. It's really cool. Um, share that with your friends and stuff and you can find other gigs of myself you can find the flyers i've designed artwork i'm putting up are going to be there very soon photography is going to be uploaded very soon and of course you'll be able to find all my social links on there as well um again thanks so much for tuning in it's always a pleasure never a chore uh, if you're going to cross the road make sure you look left and right and drink loads of water peace take care and be safe bye